we at Mozilla realized this and we we saw JavaScript was something that you could compile to. Adobe had somebody in the Adobe Labs doing this too. He had a project called Alchemy. We had somebody who's now at Google, um, Alon Zakai, who did his own LLVM-based compiler that would take C or C++ and it would emit JavaScript. And you would think this is crazy. You're going from this sort of machine type, slow level, you know, controlled memory allocation language to this garbage collected, dynamically typed, uh, high level, higher level language. But alone sort of just phenomenologically carved nature of the joint and found the forms that were fast in JavaScript. Mm -hmm. And then with Dave Herman, who I'd recruited from Northeastern University, who was a type theorist, and um, Luke Wagner, who's still at Mozilla, who was the compiler guy and, and the JIT guy, they figured out how to codify what Alone had done into a typed subset of JavaScript called ASM.js. And this is a strange thing to think about because it doesn't have new syntax. The types are casts that occur in dominator positions in the control flow graph. So it's it's like a hack on JavaScript and it's a subset and it uses those bitwise operators that I talked about copying from Java mm -hmm. to basically cast um, num numeric types, which are double precision flowing point into integers. And so inside JavaScript in the kernel semantics are integers. And if you use these operators, if a compiler emits them in the right places, you can then treat them as typed values, typed memory locations, and you can type check your program. And you can not only type check it, you can compile it. And this is all in sort of linear time, O N. You can compile it to have deterministic performance. It doesn't touch the garbage collector. Mm -hmm. It calls a bunch of functions that come from the C functions or C++ code that you're compiling. And you can make the epic Unreal Engine go in 30 frames a second. Yeah. And when we did this in 2013 in the fall, you know, Tim Sweeney, I met, um, didn't think it could be done quickly, thought it would take years. And the team went to Raleigh, to Epic, and in four days they had Unreal Engine ported by pressing a compile button, right? They had wow. to, but they had to have WebGL, which came from right. OpenGL, ES, which came from OpenGL, which came from Silicon Graphics GL. They had to have Web Audio, so they could map OpenAL, which was another audio library standard, to Web Audio, which was kind of a Chrome idiosyncratic thing. Um, but they, they could make, make it work. And they had to have ASM.js for fast C++ mm -hmm. to JavaScript. And uh, if you didn't have that fast compiler step, the JavaScript you'd write by hand trying to do an Unreal game would, would be too big and too slow. It would, it would touch the garbage collector. It would not keep up with 30 frames a second on the hardware, 2013 hardware. So we demoed that at, at um, uh, this must have been fall 2012 now that I think about it, because we demoed it at, at GDC, Game Developer Conference 2013. Mm -hmm. And people were stunned. It's like Unreal Engine, Unreal Tournament running in my browser window. No plugin, no Flash, no Java, no. So were those the early days of because JavaScript now is able to run basically on par with a lot of the, the like C plus plus. Yeah, and, and even before then, you had the fast JavaScript VMs in two thousand eight when Chrome came out. Just before it came out, Mozilla, my friend Andreas Gal and I. Uh, and others hacked out TraceMonkey, our trace-based JIT. The uh, Squirrel Fish Extreme team at Apple did their JIT. And we were all competing on these, these crazy performance benchmarks. It was a little bit too much tuning of the benchmark. But JavaScript started getting fast, and developers started noticing it. But it was still kind of this its own high-level language with garbage collection. The ASM.js step helped us go further, because until we really proved the, the concept, people were still saying, well, JavaScript's okay, it's getting faster, thanks to V8. Everybody gave Google credit, especially Google. But, but we need something to kill Flash. Let's use the portable native client code that Google had acquired, native client, um, which is a separate lineage for taking basically C code, compiling it into a software fault isolated container of some sort, using some kind of virtualization technique. And maybe it can even be in process and still be memory safe. That would be awesome. But they ended up using process isolation too. And that kind of weakened it. And in the end, it was like portable native client. Okay, you know, meet the new boss, same as the old boss. This is the Google Flash, right? We're, <laughs> yeah. But but when, when we did ASM.js and we showed Unreal Engine working, I think it was only a matter of time before Google threw in the towel. And in fact, everybody agreed in spring of 2015, we're going to take what was proven by ASM.js and make a new syntax, a binary syntax that's efficient that loads into the same JavaScript VM that JavaScript loads into. So there'll be two source languages, one VM, very important, one garbage collector, one memory manager, one set of compiler stages, uh, and that's called WebAssembly. And that's the successor to ASM.js. And it's important that it have binary syntax because 
at the end of the day, especially on mobile, if you're downloading JavaScript, even if you're using LZ compression on the wire, that's cool, but you've got to blow it out into memory and then parse the silly mm. eight character function keyword that I right. picked <laughs> when I should have used something shorter. I picked it because of awk, the Unix tool. Um, so anyway, I'm not following. I want to, but I'm not following the the awk thread. Yeah, but, don't worry. Uh, about it. <laughs> Sorry, uh, <laughs> is it surprising to you that uh, how damn fast JavaScript is these, these days? I mean, like, because you've been through the whole journey. Yeah. I know every every step of the way, but is it like? I mean, it's how it feels incredible. It does, but I knew. It, so the funny thing is, computer science is this big karmic wheel, right? Wheel of Fortuna, um, <laughs> and uh, in, in the supposed to ninety seven, I was loaned by Netscape to do due diligence for Sun in their acquisition of Anamorphic, which was uh, David Unger uh, and, and friends, um, people, uh, Craig, I'm forgetting his name, he went to Microsoft, uh, these Stanford language buffs who had taken Smalltalk and then David created Self as a simpler sort of Smalltalk language and made really fast just-in-time compiling VMs for them. And they, you know, well ahead of Java Hotspot or JavaScript V8 or any of these modern VMs, figured out how to make dynamic code fast. Because Smalltalk is a dynamic language, right? It has classes, it has, I think, more lockdown declarative syntax than JavaScript, but it's fundamentally dynamic. You don't declare the types. Um, but you could in infer the types as the program runs and you start to form these ideas about what types are actually flowing through key operations and you form little so-called polymorphic inline caches that are optimized machine code. The cache is the machine code that assumes it does a quick check to make sure the type is right. And if it's not right, it bails to the interpreter. And if it is right, you go pretty fast. And that short test is a predicted branch. So things are things are pretty quick. All that amazing stuff I knew about in the 90s. And I I, I didn't have time to do it. And Anamorphic got bought by Sun and they did Hotspot. And you needed that even in Java, because at scale, Java has some dynamic aspects due to invoke interface. You can have basically collections of Java code where the, you don't know at, at the time each each module or package is compiled exactly what's being called, what the, what subclass or what implementation of an interface is being called. Mm -hmm. And so you want to optimize using this sort of dynamic polymorphic caching there too. And they did that. And Hotspot's amazing, amazing beast. I've met like 13 people who all claim they created it. <laughs> I think I think one of them may deserve credit more than others. Um, but uh, I didn't get to do that in JavaScript. And when we knew that, that Google uh, was going to do their own browser, which we knew at Mozilla around 2006, um, I also met the team that did V8. And it turns out it was Lars Bach, who was one of the young engineers from Anamorphic, who got acquired by Sun. And so Lars is like the you know, one of the world's expert on these kinds of virtual machines. And he picked my brains about JavaScript. I could tell he didn't like it at the time, but <laughs> he had to do it. And Oh, really? Interesting. Yeah, in 2006 lunch at Google's campus. Um, and, and then I had another friend who was DevRel at Chrome, and he said, yeah, we don't know what they're doing. This is getting 2007 to fall, getting toward 2008. We're trying to get Chrome out, and we don't know what's going on with the V8 team. They're off in Aarhus, Denmark, you know, rewriting their engine four times, which is good. That's the right way to do this kind of development. You know, they were learning JavaScript, including all its quirks, which they came to hate, the fire of a thousand suns, which is one of the reasons that Lars and company did Dart, their own language. But they also made the language fast. And meanwhile, we knew this was happening, so we got our act together with... Um, Trace Monkey, our tracing JIT at Mozilla, and Apple, I think, was also aware, and so they were doing their own JIT. So the, the era of JITted fast JavaScript in 2008 had this prehistory going back to Smalltalk and Self and Anamorphic. And the again, the lineage is interesting because you had Lars and Anamorphic, and then he ends up at Google. Yeah, and today we have an incredibly fast language that, like you said, still you know, without hate, you can't have love. So uh, mm -hmm. I, th I think there's both love and hate for this dance, uh, this rich, complex dance of JavaScript throughout its history. There's a but, dialectic, of sure, for sure. 